Hi everybody, welcome to Next Tech University. My name is Olga Dietry and today I have with me Nate Rolletter with Next Tech Security and Aaron Larson from the Hayes PD, he's an investigator. And we're gonna talk today about how to keep your business and your home safe throughout the holidays. So holiday season is coming up. There's already Christmas decoration everywhere around the stores. And traditionally that seems to be a time that is more prone to shoplifting and some, sort, some of those things. So we thought we'll give you some tips today on how to protect yourself, your home, and your business. So Aaron, help us understand a little bit why in the public image is, see, do the holidays seem to be this time of year that security seems to be a little bit more important? Well, with the, when it comes to security and the holidays, it just seems that uh, sometimes things pick up a little bit more. People are out and about. Uh, they're not necessarily paying attention to what's going on around them. Uh, they're buying expensive items such as TVs, laptops, right. little new phones, uh, little gadgets right. for their kids. And so, you know, it's import important to, to start thinking about your safety and security uh, during those okay. times, whether it's at home or out shopping or um, just out and about. So. Okay. Is there any actual statistics that show that there is an increased number of incidents during the holidays? There is. I've seen, you know, prior to coming here, I looked up some statistics and stuff like that, okay. and it did show that, the, you know, some, some cities do have larger larger uh, crime rates during the ho holidays. Things pick, pick up uh, a little okay. bit for, the, for them. Um, I can't say that we've seen that here in Hayes as mu much, but, um, uh, you know, there might be a little bit of a spike. But Okay, so what you're saying is we should be safe all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about what are the absolutely essential must-dos to try to protect yourself or your home and your business throughout the holiday season? Well, when we when we talk about uh, you know, I start with uh, being out and about shop shopping, for example. Okay. For example, um, you should always be a pay paying attention to your surrounding. Um, you have so many things going on in your life. You never know when somebody is watching you. For basically, they've done research on this as far as talking okay. to prisoners in uh, oh, in okay. uh, detention facilities. And they said that they pay attention to those people or they're the people that they try to victimize are those people that don't pay attention. Those people are just going about about their day. They're not paying attention to, or they're paying attention to those people, not to the people that are always looking around at their surrounding and seeing who's out and about. You know, those people that are um, guarding their, their purse, for example, covering their purse or hiding yeah. their wallet or putting yeah. their money in a front pocket instead of yeah. their back pocket. Uh, those aren't the people that they're interested in. They're interested okay. in, those, in those people that are not paying attention. So just being aware of your surroundings and who's, who's around you, who's standing right next to you. Uh, if you're at okay. the credit card machine and punching in your codes, uh, just those kind of things. Make sure you look around right. when you put in your... Right. Your if you have your gifts, um, uh, I'd say, you know, if you're going to leave your purse in your vehicle, don't leave it on your front seat. You know, uh, put it underneath a floor mat or put it in your trunk. Or something like that. Um, a lot of times, people will go up and they'll try door handles. If your doors are unlocked, oh, really? they'll get into oh, your vehicle. Wow. If your doors are locked, they won't. I hope my husband's but, listening to this. <laughs> but if they see your purse laying on the front seat, they will break your window to get to your purse. Oh, really? So if you take a little bit of precautions to hide it, conceal it, whatnot. Same thing with gifts. If you're getting large amount of gifts or something like that, put them in your trunk, opposed to your back seat or something like that. You don't want your big screen TV sitting in the back back seat, they see it, they'll break the window to get to it. Um, they're looking okay. for those easy easy marks or those easy situations that they can get stuff. So those those kind of things. Okay. Um, now when we talk about being at home, um, things as far as leaving your lights on um, mm -hmm. in your house. Uh, if you're going out of town, leave your house on a timer, set a timer so your lights come on for certain hours during the day and they're going off. Maybe your TV comes on during a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, just, just things like that, cutting back your bushes so they're not covering your windows, um, okay. just illuminating. You may even have uh, a pet sitter or somebody who comes over and checks on your house. A neighbor comes over and checks on your house, picks up your mail, your newspaper, so it doesn't look like that you are gone. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you'll see a bunch of piles of papers sitting on the, the door, doorstep. Front well, porch. that, tell, yeah. Yeah, that tell, tells you that nobody's some, been nobody's there. Been the there. So just things like that. You may even have your neighbor park their vehicle in your driveway oh, from time to time. 
Um, just, just things like, like that, just thinking outside the box, you know, if you're gonna be gone for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, put your valuables away, lock them up, just mm -hmm. different things. Good, and that was gonna be our next question is here to see, so if you do have to go out of town during the holidays, what can you do to protect your home? And you already touched on a lot of the mm -hmm. things, the lights and those types of things. Mm -hmm. Nate, do you have anything else where you, that you see a lot of times when you talk to homeowners, um, tips that you give them during that time? Sure. Um, you know, when I've been out doing walkthroughs, you know, the typical ones are always to make sure that the front door is locked, the back door is locked, um, that the windows are locked. So a lot of times I've been out, uh, can't count how many times I've been out doing walkthroughs and customers, you're doing your evaluation and you look and you say, Mr. Customer, Mrs. Customer, did you notice that uh, your window is unlocked? You know, in a, in a bedroom where, you know, in the fall season, you might uh, be nice to have the windows open in right. the evenings you for some cool, that. fresh air, uh, but you forget to lock them. You just slide it shut and, you know, you're good to go. Well, um, so um, just making sure that you're locking things up. And, you know, if you do have an alarm system, uh, making sure that before you leave to go out on vacation that you're testing it. Um, don't wait until the day you guys leave to go on vacation to arm your system and then, uh, um, worry about something not working correctly and getting that phone call and, and being a nuisance while you're on a vacation. So um, just those typical things, making sure that, um, you know, if it has snowed, that you have somebody that comes over and cleans the driveway, mm -hmm. kind of what Aaron said, making sure that the house looks alive, make it look like there's somebody there um, and that there's activity around the house. Do, and Do the Kevin alone home and mm -hmm. home alone and do the party mm -hmm. with yeah, the yeah. cutouts. I think that's a good idea. So another <laughs> another thing that I just thought of is that, you know, packages. We all get packages during the holiday season. Right. You're always getting stuff. And where, where does UPS, where do they leave that stuff? But they leave it front on your porch. front porch. They may ring your doorbell, but they walk off right. and it's just sitting there. Now, there are reports, I've seen them before in other years and that, not necessarily here, but, but uh, there have been reports of stuff being taken off of. Uh, front porches. Um, they follow those those because they know there's a lot of things coming. They'll follow them around, and if they don't think anybody's home, because they ring the doorbell, nobody comes to the door. What do they do? They right. they go pick it up. So you know, just those you know, have somebody who who's maybe around to watch for the package showing up that can pick it up um, if you're not around. Just okay. So um, in terms of social media, we've always uh, seen that people post on Facebook, especially going on vacation. On my way there and there. Um, what has changed? Can you, do you give people some guidelines on how to deal with social media? What's changed kind of um, in terms of security and keeping your house safe? Well, you know, I, I, would, I would say that everybody, you, you put everything, you put your whole life out there for everybody to, right. see, uh, everybody to see. And so you should be locking down that so that it's just your okay. friends and family that are see, seeing that um, instead of everybody. Um, as much as you can. I personally don't have Facebook or anything <laughs> like that uh, because I'm a police officer. I try to stay out of that eye. I don't want people knowing things about me. But uh, if you choose to do that, then to just lock that stuff down um, and then to be aware. If you're going away for holidays, don't advertise that okay. um, on social media because, like I said, anybody can research that. They can right. see that. They'll know when you're going to be, be gone. Okay. Um, uh, those kind of those kind of things. Okay, so. okay. Very good. Um, so you talked a little bit about a security system. How can a security system or surveillance system help when you are worried about your home being unattended? Can you touch a little bit on that? Yeah, a security system is going to be more of a proactive approach to let you know of the activity that's going on um, at your home or at your business, um, both. So um, security systems typically uh, can be alerting you of uh, doors opening or closing okay. if there's motion within a certain area or a room um, within okay. a, a business or at the home. Um, but also it's a time of the year that, you know, uh, on, the, on the home front side of it, where we're starting to see heaters kicking on, so there's some of those other life safety type things that a security system can be helpful for too uh, while you're away, alerting you if there's a carbon monoxide um, leak or uh, smoke detections for a furnace that might be um, something's happened or not running quite correctly. Um, flood detection, so as colder temperatures, the risk of pipes freezing increases. So there's a lot of different things that a security system can help alert you and be that proactive 
approach to let you know of those activities so that sure. you can respond accordingly. And they even tie in, so you talk about smoke detector and flat flood detectors. Most people probably, probably have smoke detectors in their homes, mm -hmm. but what you're saying is they tie into your security system will be not just sounding alarm, but actually go out alerting somebody. Correct. Uh, I mean, a localized alarm uh, is good while you're at the home where you can hear it. Um, but if you're away from the house, uh, it would be really nice to have a system that can call out and alert right. the monitoring station. The monitoring station right. can alert the dispatch to respond accordingly. Okay. So uh, some of those uh, life safety um, uh, different detectors that you can add on to your alarm systems um, and it I, would be good, good. I can imagine that being a pretty big deal if you have a business and nobody's there for the entire weekend or especially now with Christmas people might not be at the business for four or five days in a row you would want to know if there's a fire the first day sure. and not when you try to come back and open up the business right yep okay so um, some people also know about cameras can you tell us a little bit what what is what do cameras do? What is the difference between security alarm system and cameras? Uh, camera systems are going to be obviously cameras that are recording uh, the live events and recording that to a hard drive um, on a PC or a server uh, or some sort of a storage device where you could go back and review the video footage. So um, this would be a really good um, kind of a layer on to alarm system for a business. This time of year, like Aaron had mentioned, uh, you see increased shoplifting activity where uh, stores are full of displays. The opportunity is is right for somebody to be walking down and get that extra display and slip something into their pocket and so surveillance can be that eyes on the situation where you can go in and review the video footage and find out what's exactly is happening whether it's uh, during business operating hours or after operating hours so um, I would think that if I were a detective um, that if I get an alarm signal for a location due to a break-in, it would be nice to have that video evidence too to maybe go back and try to piece together the puzzle um, so you can see what actually took place. Do we get a vehicle description? Do we have a, a suspect um, that maybe matches a description that we can post out to try to get more information and, and piece together that puzzle? So how do you guys then, um, how does that fit in with what you do? How does a surveillance system or a security system, how can that benefit um, your work, especially so, in the business setting? So uh, an alarm is obviously going to let us know if, if we, right. we need to be there or go there or check things out or, mm -hmm. or whatnot. So that's the, the benefit of an alarm. But in, in combination with the cameras, that's been a huge, huge thing for us, whether it's on a home or on on a business that um, we can go back and see exactly what ha happens because a lot of times we go to calls and there it's, it's he said she said you know okay. or he said he said or she whatever <laughs> but we don't know what exactly happened but if you have a video of what happened then okay. and so I mean in the last few years I, you know I don't know how many times we've we've had where on both home and business we've had evidence of what actually occurred uh, whether it was in the parking lot or it was in their front yard or uh, in their neighborhood, uh, we actually saw what took place because we had a re recording of it. Mm -hmm. And so it can be a huge benefit. It's solved cases for us. It's uh, um, some major cases, actually. Um, it, so it's been a huge benefit. So. Do you see this having like a security sign in your yard or a sticker posted on the front of your business also going to act as a deterrent for those t activities to take place in the first place? For sure. Uh, um, I. You know, we live we live right along I-70, and although, you know, we may have some homegrown people who commit burglaries and stuff like that, but we have people who come off of the interstate, and and uh, and they're opportunistic, you know. They surveil your neighborhood and that, and just seeing a sign is going to tell them, just like I said before, an easy target opposed to a hard target. Uh, you have a sign in your yard that says I have a camera system or they see a camera up in the, you know, they're going to go on to a different neighborhood. They may go on to a different house or whatnot. So is there a benefit? Yes, um, to having that. So when you talk about um, using video surveillance, especially in if something did happen after an incident, do you have any... Um, a, a, any guidelines do you see sometimes where people might have cameras as camera just camera or is there any guidelines to what you can use as evidence no there's as no far role as the picture quality goes 
No, I mean, the better the picture, the better, you know, okay. especially when we're talking about distances, because okay. it, does it usually happen right in front of the, the camera? <laughs> sometimes, but sometimes it's, you know, a block down, um, and maybe we're just catching the vehicle as it drives by, as it leaves the area. Okay. And, you know, the better the picture quality, the better they can help us. Um, even if it's not grabbing a tag, at least it grabs a description. Everybody has stickers on their vehicles, or they have, right. you know, um, whatever on the on the vehicle or a broken tail light or a headlight mm -hmm. out or a um, dent on one side of the vehicle all those mm -hmm. things help us and so the better the picture per quality the 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 better the evidence we have can you say something about that as camera equal camera or are there some things that people really need to pay attention to or look at when they're looking at getting a surveillance system and especially business setting versus a home setting Sure. Um, the market is, is flooded with a ton of different products out there and a lot of different quality levels. So uh, picking a system uh, like Aaron had mentioned that has enough resolution to go in and have the pixel uh, density that meets your expectations um, is huge. So when you're picking a system, making sure that it's a high definition, um, a 1080p or higher, um, we're starting to see the introduction of 4K. So we've all heard about 4K uh, televisions. Those resolutions are going to help have more image quality, image usability uh, to help the detectives figure out what's going on. Um, you know, typically your box stores uh, maybe have kits or uh, lower quality do-it-yourself type stuff um, at a lower cost, but you also sacrifice generally the image quality and the image resolution to have a good quality image to go back to. Um, so that's important when you're putting in a system that not all systems are created equal and to work with a, a company that has experts that can help make those recommendations to uh, get a system that meets your needs as well as your budget. So we, we mm -hmm. know that you know not everybody can afford a thousand dollar camera. Uh, mm -hmm. So we would work with the customer and find that balance of what, uh, what would be a good image uh, quality for cost mm -hmm. too. So. How about analog versus IP? Can you tell us a little bit about that? I know a lot of people have old systems out there, especially a lot of the uh, businesses uh, might have analog out there. They might want to go to IP, but they're not entirely sure. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference in one versus the other? Sure. Uh, analog systems have been around for a long time. They use the old coax cables similar to what you might be familiar with uh, providing TV service. Um, that is starting to transition to IP where we're actually uh, running a Cat5 or a Cat6 cable to the camera and we're powering the camera via power over Ethernet and we're able to get higher resolutions, 720p, 1080p, um, multi-megapixel cameras um, and gives you that increased resolution, increased image quality. Um, and that's really where the industry is moving to. So uh, when you're out there uh, researching information about systems, I would tend to recommend that uh, we would look to IP just because that's where the industry is going and is going to continue to move. So um, analog is more uh, DIY stuff and, and more um, stuff that you see that has been installed for a number of years. So um, there's been some um, some upgrades in systems and the ability to transition IP or okay. I'm sorry analog cameras to IP. Um, if you don't want to uh, get rid of your existing system, but you want to mm -hmm. take advantage of some of the features that IP systems have available. So, so kind of like hooking up to DSL while you have fiber available. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's a very good analogy. <laughs> okay. So um, you mentioned there are some opportunities if I currently have all analog and I may not just have the budget or maybe not have um, the time frame to um, transition full on IP and put all new stuff in. There are some, some things in between to where I can slowly transition. Yeah, the, the bridging the gap, um, and that's something that the, most of the manufacturers have done a really good job of because they understand that there is an investment uh, in upgrading a system from analog to IP to just go out and rip and replace. So they make that bridge um, very easy to do before you can take advantage of some of those features, whether it's uh, remotely viewing your system from your uh, smartphone or from a tablet device or a computer while you're mm -hmm. away um, on vacation or on a business trip, some of those different type of things. And then and as cameras, either uh, analog cameras that have been in place for a number of years start to fail, you can start to migrate those over to IP cameras. Or if you're adding to your system, you would just add those in as IP cameras. So um, some good options there. Okay. 
Um, and you mentioned a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about retailers. Um, so you mentioned earlier, we had a little conversation and you mentioned you actually had years of experience as an investigator um, to find so shoplifters. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Um, so did you guys, what were some of the things that you looked for or uh, did you guys take advantage of some of the video in that case? What, what would you recommend to retailers that are con worried about shoplifting, especially during the holiday season? Well, I mean, you're going to, throughout the year, you're going to have shop, shoplifters, uh, and right. you may see a little bit of an increase during the, the hol holiday se season. Um, you know, as far as what to watch watch for, you know, for me, when I used, when I did it, I wasn't an investigator at the time. Uh, I was working for a company. Okay. But, uh, um, but along with that, what I would watch for is just people that are just fit, not in play, you know, f fitting in with everybody else. They always look around. They always look around and they're always seeing who's watching and who's paying attention and sometimes just walking down an aisle and something you just look over and something just clicks and it says uh, something's not right. You know, just paying attention to those little things. Are there always tell-alls? Tell no, there's, there's not. Um, sometimes it's just experience to get, uh, and, and looking for those things. But, uh, you know, just paying attention that just don't, you know, people are just not fitting, fitting in um, is one of the things that I would look for. So. Okay. Very good, very good. Um, I'm going to switch gears here a little bit. We talked a little bit about business and surveillance. We also talked a little bit about, I want to go back to the home user. So um, if I'm a home user and I have um, a security system at my house, what actually happens if the alarm goes off? Can you talk a little bit about how that works? Is it going straight to dispatch? Is police going to show up at my door two minutes later? Mm -hmm. how, what's, the, what's the technology behind that? Well, generally, when, when we set up a, an alarm system, uh, we go through a central monitoring station. So they are that uh, holder of the information. They have a, we would set up a calling list uh, with the customer. So generally, we try to notify the homeowner um, of the activity first to make sure that it's not a false alarm for one and to alert them that there's activity going on. Mm -hmm. And then that conversation between the central monitoring station and the customer would uh, would allude to the next step in the process. So say the customer is on vacation and they're getting that phone call from the monitoring station that said they've had a break in at their home. They can let the, the monitoring station know, hey, we're on vacation. There shouldn't be anybody at the house. So then the monitoring station would then call the county dispatch. Um, and what goes on from county dispatch, you might be able to, to so, so once that call comes into dispatch, dispatch gathers that information and, uh, and then they'll dispatch the officers out there. Okay. Officers will go out to the location, whether it's a business or a uh, residential uh, home and uh, they'll check it out. They'll see if there's any obvious signs of, of break-in or anything like that. The door's unlocked, the window's broken, the whatever. What could have caused the, the alarm to go, to go off in the first place? Uh, from there, um, we'll ask to see if there's a key holder available, key holder to come and unlock the door, uh, somebody that can let us in if the homeowner wishes, and then we'll check out the location, we'll search it, see okay. is there any uh, signs of a burglary that have occurred inside. inside. Now, if the homeowner doesn't want want that, they just wanted us to check out the exterior, then then we'll do that. We'll look for those obvious signs. But if they want us to clear the clear okay. the structure, then we'll do that. Okay. Uh, we usually recommend that just to be safe, because because it's been just an unlocked door. They got in through an unlocked door. They went in. They locked it when they went went in. So we may not know. There may not be an obvious sign. But then we want to check the inside just to make sure that nobody's there. Well, the cool thing about a security alarm system, if I'm understanding right, um, even if I'm not at the location, I should be able to disarm the system, and I could even tie in my locks in that and unlock the door for mm -hmm. the PD if I wanted to from my app remotely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. All right. Um, okay, so uh, any other tricks or big, big don'ts that people are still doing? We talked about the unlock uh, windows and doors, things like that, mm -hmm. anything out of the norm. Um, that you see still people doing that you're like oh come on so the biggest thing <laughs> the biggest thing uh that i would say comes along with your your vehicles that you, you have sit, sitting out there i already covered some of some of right. it but to, to rehash that is that uh a lot of times we'll have people walk in the neighbor neighborhood it, unfortunately it's you know it's a time where school is out uh the kids get bored and they're out and about um, and so what they do is they walk around the neighborhood and they look for doors that are unlocked Doors are unlocked, they'll get in your vehicle and they'll take whatever's in there, whether it's a, all the change you have, it's cigarettes, 
it's binoculars, it's whatever you have in there. The presents you left in there, some people leave their purse in there over, right. overnight with their door unlocked. They will get that. Um, and so it's just making sure that you're, you don't leave those valuables over in your vehicle overnight or even during the day and taking those inside. Ensuring that your doors are locked uh, on your home, making sure that your doors and windows are locked, like you said. Um, so those are the, the, the biggest things. Um, you know, uh, just when you go shopping, you know, don't leave your purse in the cart. Make sure you grab your purse before you leave because sometimes they leave their purse in the, in the cart in the, in the mm -hmm. parking lot and then somebody just takes advantage of it, of it and, and they grab it. So just paying attention to, the, to those things. But I, I'd say the biggest thing is locking your doors at, <laughs> at night uh, for your vehicles and taking your valuables inside because okay. they, will, they will take advantage of that. Very they, good. So. Very good. Nate, you got any, any final words to people? Oh, um, just a, maybe a couple of, of quick reminders. Um, you know, if you do have a key that you hide underneath the, the doormat, um, you know, maybe make sure that's in a little bit better location. Um, if you are going to be, we circle back around to this, if you are going to be leaving, make sure you test your system out before you go. Make sure you feel comfortable with it. Um, if you don't or you don't remember the steps to arm your system or disarm it correctly, contact your service provider and ask for that refresh. We'd be happy to go through those processes with you. So that way these guys don't get false alarms and we're taking up their time going out to a site to look through when it was maybe a user error of just not remembering how to arm or disarm the system system correctly or if you have temporary help uh, for the the holiday season where you might have some additional key holders that are coming in before or after to stock shelves those type of things mm -hmm. making sure that they are familiar with the process of how to arm and disarm the system um, properly so um, one of the things that if you've got uh, somebody coming over to check the house um, you know make sure that they are familiar with your system if you do have one in place so that way um, they these guys don't get the, the false alarm so uh, most of the false false alarms that we see um, are user error because the customer hasn't used the system in quite a while um, and so we want to go through that quick retraining process to get the customer familiar with that pro um, arming and disarming um, so which any service provider would do for them yeah and Aaron I guess um, I think you might have some notes on just for false alarm references uh, something that I get asked sometimes is uh, what's does city of Hayes have any type of false alarm fees that they they charge if you're getting called out on a, on a, on a repetition so, so your fir your first time offense is is free um, when you get to your second second time offense then it's a $15 uh, fee uh, for your third one, it's twenty dollars. For your fourth one, it's twenty-five, and then any any after your fourth, so your fifth and beyond, is fifty dollars each each okay. time. And do you guys see that frequently, where you just have to keep going to the same site, um, or is it? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was told that the numbers are astronomical, so okay. I don't have the figures in, in front of me, but uh, I was told that there are quite a few. And, and being a patrol officer in the past, I know that the, you know there there are some frequent flyers that we're, we're constantly going to those those addresses. So. And my my um, response to uh, to that is, you know, if you are seeing those. Um, get, a, get a ticket coming in to your service provider to have the system checked out because um, we want the, the system to be beneficial when you guys get the call. It's not, oh, we were there last night, um, so maybe we're going to take our time getting there tonight. We want that, that uh, right. alarm that's coming through right. to be that immediate response, and um, we don't want it to be that frequent, um, that frequent reoccurrence of a false alarm. So um, that would be good to have those test out. Okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, well, thank you guys so much. Um, do we have any questions? Do we have anybody logged in? Okay, doesn't look like we have any questions. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, and thank you to Aaron and thank you to Nate. If Thanks, you guys Aaron. have any more questions or just want to know more about alarm systems or surveillance systems for your home or your business, feel free to give Nextec a call. We'd be happy to go over that with you. Thank you.